Welcome in to the Holler at Home Team podcast. Proud to be joined by one of our own, one of Decatur's own, Rodriguez Hot Rod Livesey, also known as Maybach Hot. Yes, He's going to be fighting this weekend, October 23rd, inside of State Farm Arena. He's in good shape. He's ready to go. Hot Rod, how you feel? Welcome to the Holler at Home Team podcast. Uh, I feel great, and thank you for having me. Talk about uh, how you got to this point. You are one of the uh, young and upcoming boxers here locally, but exactly. you've been boxing for a long time, going back exactly. to your teenage years. How'd you go from a teenager starting to this point in your career when you're in your 30s, okay. ready to throw the hands the way you do? Um, it's, just, it's a process. You know, a lot of people look at it and think when you get to where you're going, like he just got there overnight, but nobody see where it started before. So. Like um, for me, it was it was a rough process because in the beginning I was one foot in and one foot in the street still. So a lot of people don't know my first six amateur fights I lost. So uh, the thing for me was my motivation was a lot of people don't know too that Evander Holyfield lost his twelve uh, his first twelve or thirteen amateur fights. So for me that was my motivation to keep going and to say if he could do it, I could do it. What was it that got you? out of the street life. Sometimes, a lot of times, mm -hmm. environment mm -hmm. shapes a lot of people's mm -hmm. lives differently, and some people get the chance, some people don't get the chance to get out. What was it that finally got you out and got you all the way in in boxing? Um, I had lost my best friend to the streets. Um, he was one of the best boxers I had ever seen. And he used to call me every morning, he used to wake me up, uh, he used to try to get me to take it serious, come on, let's go run, and, just, and I never did. And he used to say, you got all the potential in the world, you just don't take it serious. So the, when I lost him the street to the street violence, it, that was my wake up call to say, you know, and he wasn't even that that kind of guy. So that for me, that was like, hey, you could be next. You either can strain your life up or you could be next. And I decided that my kids need me and I wanted to chase my dream. So I did what I had to do so I could do what I want to do later. What's the difference in focus as far as being somebody starting at 13, what you have to do for training, and then what you have to do mentally as opposed to being in your 30s, mm -hmm. knowing what you have to do, how you focus, how you train? Well, younger boxing as a younger young man, it was, um, I don't, you don't understand uh, the qualities and the things that come along with boxing. It's like my mind, it wasn't mature enough to understand you don't play boxing. You know, so as I got older, I understand that this is something you don't you take serious. Boxing, you can't play. You don't have a teammate. You can't throw the ball to somebody. You can't pass the ball to somebody. You can't tag a teammate in. Once that bell ring, it's all on you. What are the advantages you have as an older boxer, mm -hmm. um, being that you know more seasoned? You've been doing it for a while, but now that you're a little bit older, what are some of the advantages that a more exper experienced and seasoned boxer would have coming into the ring? Um. I've seen all types of styles. I've been in there with uh, guys that was national champions. I've been in there with guys. Uh, I mean, the gym that I train at, Granite City Boxing, it's nothing but future world champions in there. We got Najee Lopez, Tito Lopez, Casey K. Champ Dixon, um, um, Brian Norman Jr. Um, he's Brian Norman Jr. is twenty and he's twenty two and old with twenty one knockouts. So I mean, I'm in a gym amongst champions, so I have no choice but to be a dog. For people who haven't seen you, how would you describe your your style? I've seen some of your workouts, you know, very elusive, certainly have the power and certainly have the speed. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm what you would call a boxer puncher. Um, I, like my, I like to walk down. I can box. I will, I will box if need be, but I just like to walk down and throw bombs and pick my shots. When you look at overall the fight game, um, when we look at boxing now, sometimes it's for the hype. When you see some of the YouTube fighters fighting and, you know, trying to build some hype up to the game. But the, the, the sport of boxing, how do you feel about it overall? And where do you think it is? Where do you think it's going? I think boxing is in a good place. Um, when you look at guys like Jake Paul, a lot of people look at it like, oh, he's not a real fighter. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. You have to respect it because he goes in the gym. He trains just like everybody else. And he doesn't have an amateur background. He didn't. He didn't put in the work for years that everybody else did. But he trains like everybody. And you have to respect it because, in the sport of boxing, if you can't put, if you can't fill up seats, you don't have no power in this game. I don't care how good you is. So they're one of the guys. They put butts in seats, so they have power. And you just have to respect it because they train just as well as everybody else do. So I think it's a good thing because they brought a lot of eyes to the sport of boxing. You think it's uh, something that still can attract, uh, you know, talented, youthful folks? Uh, you see basketball, you see track and field, you see football, and what kids are putting up on social media. Do you think boxing still has that opportunity to draw young folks into the sweet science? 
I think so because you got to think the world is so built on violence nowadays, so it's a violent sport. So what more could you do than boxing? <laughs> <laughs> Your thoughts on being a local kid? Uh, you talked about Evander Holyfield. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were upstairs talking about uh, Vernon Forrest, mm-hmm. who we uh, knew years ago. What's it like being a local guy, you know, living in Latonia from Decatur and, and, and being here, being able to fight inside the State Farm Arena in front of your home fans? Uh, it's a wonderful feeling, you know, especially being where I came from and doing what I did in my life and to be why I'm now, I'm, I'm proud of me. And we, where do you see yourself going? Um, you got in here, you're handling your business. Mm-hmm. Uh, eight, eight, oh, and one, you do have one draw, but mm-hmm. unblemished in the loss column. Mm-hmm. Where do you see yourself going and how long do you want to do this? Um, I see myself winning world titles and making millions. That's the ultimate goal, you know, is to make money and win belts. We want belts and we want money. Anything outside of that, I don't want nothing to do with it. And um, as far as my draw, a lot of people don't know in that fight, I broke my I broke my right hand three times. And and the only fights that I don't have knockouts is in the fights that I broke my I broke my right hand. The fight that I got a draw, I broke my right hand in the first round. That was the that was the first time I got surgery on it. So um and just so happened the guy I was fighting, he was tough. I mean, I could hear him with a kitchen sink, he was still coming. So it was just hard to keep him off of me with just a jab. But here we are again. You fought Thank through you. it, and you yeah. didn't lose the fight. No, I didn't lose. Yeah. Your thoughts on, um, you know, what are some of the things uh, young boxers need to stay away from when they want to get to this level and, you know, springboard to the next level? What are some of the things you have to avoid? What would be some of your advice for them? Partying, drinking, smoking, drugs. Um, you know, boxing is one of those sports where you have to be dedicated. Um, if you're not putting in your work, it will show. If you're not doing everything you're supposed to do, it will show. And it's one of those things where boxing is one of those things where a lot of people think it's physical. It's not physical. It's 90 percent mental, 10 percent physical. So you can have all the talent in the world, but going into the fight, you're going in the back of your head think, dang, I just had sex a couple of days ago. Dog, I didn't get my miles in like I was supposed to. So in the back of your mind, you might not say that to the person close to you, but in the back of your mind, you know you didn't do the things that you were supposed to do. So if you start getting tired a little bit, it's going to play on your mind. And then when it plays on your mind, it plays on your anxiety. Your anxiety plays on your win. You know what I'm saying? So it's almost like a domino effect. It's funny how you say that, you know, talking, covering uh, NFL folks and NBA guys for a while, how when they got older, the things you're saying now, Mm -hmm. they picked up on and if they had a do-over, they would have cut some of a, at least some of the hours out they were doing some of those stuff right. in, their, in their career and how it might have helped them with their longevity. So that's good advice. What are some things you have to do you don't like? What are some of the things you have to eat or stay away from that you would like to get in you when you're, when you're in training mode? Uh, I'm straight baked chicken, baked fish, greens. I do a little bit of rice or carbs just to put in, just to have something to burn off because just like as far as the greens and the baked fish, I can do 50 jumping jacks and burn that off. So a little bit of carbs. Uh, I stay away from fried foods, breads, juice, Kool-Aids, it's just straight water. So at this point, I'm tired of spinach. I'm tired of salmon. I'm tired of salads. I'm tired of water. I'm tired of all that. And then you have to think too, I hadn't had sex in two months. So my testosterone level is high. I'm just so after you the fight, get to this fight. Yeah, after this fight, <laughs> after this fight, that's the first thing I'm gonna be looking for: a ten piece and some thighs. <laughs> Yeah. Where did you where did you learn the lessons of nutrition? That's something a lot of people don't learn either. You right. know what to eat, what food does to the body, mm-hmm. and then when you're in a mode as a uh, high level athlete, when and where did you learn those things of what to put in and what not to put in your system? Um, just coming along the way uh, in my training because even like in my amateur days when I wasn't taking it serious in the amateurs, I was fighting, taking fights at 152. I took a fight at 158. Uh, I would come in in national tournaments. Be and in, in national tournaments, you have to be 152 on the dot. You can't be two ounces over. If they give you an hour to lose it, you can't lose it. They move you up to the next weight class, wow. which is 165. Oh boy! So I would be come in 152. There was one time I went to a tournament. I was 152.8, 152 and eight ounces. I couldn't get those eight ounces off. They moved me up to 165. So you think about how serious I took it now. Now, after this fight I'm fighting at now, I'm fighting at 140. Today, I'm on weight right now, and we four days away from the fight. So it shows you how, to, how serious I took the game then and how serious I take it now. Talk about your opponent, um, you know, what you have to watch out for, what you hope to get done in the ring on the 23rd of October. Um, 
my opponent is a he's a very seasoned fighter. Um, he has almost thirty fights. He's been in there with all type of fighters. He's seen all type of styles. He moves a lot. He's almost like a jackrabbit in the ring. So for me, it'll be like a snake in a box with a with a rat. It's just cutting him methodically, cutting the ring off, touching him, touching him with shots, and then you know eventually we're gonna get him out of there. And when you look at being able to get people, some fans and some new eyes into the building, uh, what would you say for people who uh, might have a little bit extra time, might be very interested in coming down to see what are they going to see on the fight card, what are they going to see from you? Uh, it'd be fireworks. You'd think it was 4th of July. Well, that sounds like a plan. This guy is a local product here in Atlanta. He loves Atlanta. He is Atlanta. And hopefully he comes through. Everybody will be rooting for him. We certainly will be here at 680 Fan. Thank you, Champ, for stopping by. Uh, We wish you well. And hopefully you stop back through again as your journey continues here in the boxing world. Anytime. Anytime. Thank you for Hot Rod joining us. We'll see you next time on the Holler at Home Team podcast.